Welcome back everyone to Author Story. I am your host Alexander Lim and yes, it I'm back uh, at this particular time in our tumultuous time in our history. So this episode's featured book, which you can check out by clicking on the Amazon link in the video description below is Swerve, Poems on Environmentalism, Feminism and Resistance. The author, Ellery Akers, is definitely an artist as her artwork has been displayed in galleries and museums throughout the United States and she has also written poems, essays, and a, pre and a play, sorry, Letters to Anna. So Ellery, welcome to Author Story. Thank you very much for being with us. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. So first off, a little about yourself. What got you interested in poetry? Well, um. I grew up in New York City, which is a very strange place to grow up if you're interested in nature, which is what I've been interested in my whole life as a okay. writer and artist. But my grandmother was really into poetry and mm. she would walk around the house and she would recite poetry like when she was doing the dishes or something. Mm -hmm. And I grew up thinking poetry was just a normal part of life. Mm. And I I became a, a poet and an artist, and nature is really what I love to write about. I work outside almost all the time. I love being in nature. I set up a camp chair and a hiking trail, and I, I write and draw. Mm. So I think nature is what inspires me. All right, nice. So, uh, I mean, you're, you, as you mentioned, you're an artist, and you also, I, I know you write, you write essays. Uh, so is this kind of like, um, do you regard this thing as kind of like a continuous, I know, continuous spectrum in terms of your endeavor with regards to, you know, your love of nature? Yes, I think of myself primarily as a poet, but I have written an illustrated book for kids and I write nature essays, but it, nature is the theme through everything. Mm, okay, so I'd just like to take do, go, do a little sidetrack here because your poems uh, some of your works have dealt with some pretty serious social subject matter, like um, your not children's novel, Sarah's Waterfall. I mean, it's a it covers a pretty serious subject. Uh, given your love for nature, what makes you want to write about serious things like this? You know, uh, my children's book is about sexual abuse, and I was sexually abused like one out of three women. Mm -hmm. But I found that there is a tremendous healer. You know what John Muir said? He said. Earth has no sorrow that Earth cannot heal, and I think nature is an amazing healer. And I feel uh, I, I tend to seem to write about things that nobody wants to talk about. My current book is a lot about climate change, mm -hmm. and my uh, own was about sexual abuse. And but I think um, talking about these things is the only way we are going to make a difference. Right, right. And uh, you're you're being pretty close to nature. I mean, I, I heard that for something like 20 years, you camped out. I mean, consistently, I believe. Uh, I mean, for 20 years straight, that is uh, something that's not done e every day. What inspires you to do this? You know, um, I did spend 20 years in a tent in the wilderness. And mm -hmm. I should be clear, Alex, I wasn't there all year round. Like, John Muir was my hero, mm -hmm. but he would camp for like, you know, 12 months a year, and when it was snowing, he'd just jump up a day to keep warm. Mm -hmm. But I was not tough like that. And when winter happened, I would go home and be normal and have a job. Mm -hmm. uh, but I found I was uh, teach uh, poetry workshops, and I was on a break one summer, and I found that I loved camping so much. It made me so creative. It made me so happy that I couldn't mm -hmm. stop. And I wrote all my books out there in the wilderness, and I felt a tremendous sense of connection to animals and plants. Mm, okay, and you know, you, you get a lot out of this, but uh, maybe maybe you can um, explain a little something to us, because a lot of folks, a lot of people nowadays, they think that going out in nature is, quote, a good idea, unquote. Uh, but what is it people can get out of really going out in nature and getting in touch with it, not necessarily camping for a long time the way you did, but just getting in touch with it. You know, I think nature um, is such a healer. I think it's a form of ancient medicine. I also think it's the original meditation teacher. Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually scientifically been proved, I mean, there's studies on this, that people who spend time in nature um, 
have less depression and less insomnia and less stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. It helps with diabetes. It helps kids with ADHD. Mm -hmm. uh, it helps kids get better grades. Mm -hmm. And doctors are actually writing prescriptions now for people to spend time in nature. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a tremendous. And in Japan, you probably know there's a a whole system of medicine called forest bathing mm -hmm. and they put people out in the woods and their immune systems goes up so mm -hmm. I found it's a tremendous way to be present and be grounded but studies show it's a tremendous way to get better physically even mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, so this is not just people would think as as a good idea, but this really is an honest to goodness, uh, great idea for for our well being, for our health. Yes. Mm, okay. Great. Okay. So, uh, Ellery, now on to the book. Uh, Swerve. Well, what's the name? What's behind? What's the story? Is there a story behind this? Uh, the name of your book behind this title, Swerve. Yes. You know, I called it Swerve because. I feel there have been many swerves in history. We are right in the middle of a swerve, mm -hmm. right at this moment. Um, and I feel that in the past there have been positive swerves. We're in a swerve at the moment that's catastrophic, of course. Right. But in the past there was the Berlin Wall one minute and then suddenly champagne the next day. Mm -hmm. There was a part minute and the next day we have freedom from South Africa. Mm -hmm. So it made me very hopeful to think about how history can change suddenly. Mm -hmm. And my hero and who I dedicated the book to is Rachel Carson. Mm -hmm. And because it's one woman, it was this amazing swerve in history. We got the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, the Wilderness Act, the whole concept of ecology. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a poem in the book called At Any Moment there could be a swerve in a different direction. And in that poem, I talk about a, a river in Ohio that was catching fire. It was so toxic. Mm -hmm. And then, who knows? I mean, a swerve happened, and suddenly it got cleaned up. So my feeling is, my message in the book is hope. We have turned things around before, and we can turn things around again. Mm. Yeah. Okay, okay. So uh, I'd like to go over uh, the subjects of, you know, the, the things mentioned in your book title, uh, one by one, if that's okay. So, yeah. first off, environmentalism. What makes you uh, write about our environment? Well, you know, I am an environmentalist, a feminist, mm -hmm. and I'm an activist, so okay. I am all these things. All um, right, okay, okay. So, I guess I speak from experience, but I wrote about all these different themes because one thing I feel is, one way to heal the planet is to recover feminine values. Mm -hmm. And we really know that we're all interdependent and it's very clear from this virus, we are interdependent. Mm -hmm. And um, the whole uh, kind of masculine ethos of you know competition and winning and the best person to win, it isn't working for mm -hmm. us. We need to think more about community and women are really gifted in this way. And in the book, I talk about three women, Wangari Maathai, who planted 51 million trees, and um, I, Barbara McClintock, who was a scientist, and she found the secret of the corn gene because she was thinking as a woman, and all the male scientists were thinking there must be a top gene that is going to be the boss of the other genes. Mm -hmm. And she, because she was a woman, thought, I bet the secret of the corn gene is every all the genes are working together and they're helping each other. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like we can recover feminine values and we need to take action. That I think is what I found. I started writing the book from a tremendous sense of climate anxiety and grief. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the book, I realized the antidote to despair is action. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And I guess action, I, 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 I suppose, is the underlying um, underlying res objective or result of uh, being, a, being an environmentalist, uh, being a feminist. I think so. I think if you love nature, it's really important to, to try to protect it. Mm -hmm. Right, right, okay. So I'm, I'm just curious, uh, going back a little bit, um, when, when did you get interested in when did you start on the path to these realizations you presently have about uh, the need for a feminine outlook on things? 
Well, I do think, I guess I really studied women who are making a difference, mm-hmm. like the one I read about in my book, and um, Jane Goodall was one of my heroes, mm-hmm. Rachel Carson was one of my heroes, uh, and I feel like women have really made a huge difference to the environment, and um, I often, like I'm a, a human, right, I get depressed right. by the environment, and I think, All oh, right. God. You know, we're only got 10 years and we're toast. And But then I really try to turn that around. And I think about some of these women who made a difference. And I think we actually do have time. We have 10 years to make a difference. Mm-hmm. It's a great time to be alive. Mm-hmm. And I don't get busy. So these women, I guess, really have inspired me. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. So um, since we're talking about a book of, of poems, uh, Ellery, would you mind uh, telling us you know, reciting one or two poems in the book just to give our listeners an idea of what the book's all about. Yeah, I'd love to do that. This one is called What Nature Teaches Us. Mm-hmm. And it's about, really, all the things we get from nature. Mm-hmm. That it slows you down so you can hear the stream as it pours. It reminds you, you are in the body it made for you. The quiet in the deep ground reminds you, the rock gouged by wind. You can stand under a tree as it rests in its own frank love of itself. Rarely you see this in a man or woman, often in a tree. In the glare and heat, you can hear a garter snake slide across gravel. Your body likes to sit and watch the day moon, and you're surrounded by chlorophyll as it binds the sun in the leaves. And you sit under those leaves in the calm air, and your mind surrenders its locomotives, and you breathe. It gets a, uh, it gave a real sense of, um, yeah, nature. I mean, I could just hear the garter snake slithering over the gravel there. Well, I could read one more if you want. Yeah, this please, one, please go ahead. Is about taking action, okay. which um, an important part of the book. I feel like we can all take action. We can make such a difference with our lives right now. Right. So. This one has an epigraph from Ursula Le Guin, and I'll just read the epigraph. We live in capitalism. Its power seems inescapable. So did the divine right of kings. Any human power can be resisted and changed by human beings. Taking action. Oh, and I should also mention, the poem mentions a couple of things. Fracking, Mm -hmm. it uh, refers also to Standing Rock when these uh, Vietnam vets went and tried to help the Native Americans, mm-hmm. and it also refers to um, the immigrants at the airports. Mm-hmm. Action. It's good to act, to lean into the body of the world, to know lawyers sit at airports with signs saying, we can help, written in Farsi. It's good to stop machines giant needles that drill into the earth because what they are stitching is the end. To see soldiers who wear camouflage, shirts and pants that look like leaves and bark, kneel in front of the Sioux and say they're sorry for what's been taken, even the language for leaves and bark. It's good to signal to the others who are shocked, to know we're not alone in shock, that when we drive past a house, we know someone is sitting in a chair in front of a TV, shocked. But the men who want to make us afraid are afraid. And my time on earth is a huge breath. I can blow that breath 
into the world. Mm. Nice, nice. What, what I'm getting here is that, you know, because, uh, you know, I, the last time I really I delved into poetry was back in uh, back in high school, back in college. I mean, um, s standard guys like E.E. E. Cummins and guys like that. And this one is, I know, this is, this is contemporary. I mean, this refers to present day events, what's going on uh, all around us right now. So I find that personally very interesting. Well, you know, uh, poetry is not all that popular, as you know. And, yeah. and I once called the information in New York City and said, could you give me the number of the Poetry Society of America? Okay. And the information operator came back and said, you know, I've looked everywhere under Poultry Society, American Society of Chicken Ranchers. Okay. <laughs> can't find anything. So poetry is not really mainstream, yeah. but I feel... One of the things it does, and what we need right now, is soul. Poetry mm -hmm. is the soul of the culture, I believe. And that's probably why I wrote this book in poetry, because it, it's short, it cuts to the core. And I think we all have a soul sickness of what's happening to the earth and a grief around it. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And, and I, yeah, I, I, I was going to ask as well, um, do, do, these, uh, do you also write about these subjects in essays and do you also like paint it? I mean, is this uh, a present concern uh, that you express yourself in these media as well? Yes, I'm also a visual artist and uh, with both writing and art, I have a similar process. Mm -hmm. and I, of course, I was saying I really like to be out of doors. And what I try to do as both a writer and a painter, I try to look at a river or a tree not from the outside in and describe it. Oh, gee, I'm such a great writer. I can describe this tree really well. And right. no, uh, what I want to do is become the tree from the mm -hmm. inside. And I actually sit there for hours and say to the tree or the river, "What's it like to live your life?" I mm -hmm. want to know so I can write about this. And it, it takes a certain kind of humility. I, I just don't want to be like I know how to do this. I want to learn from nature how to write about it, how to paint it. Right, right. So, so this is uh, so this process of yours. I mean, I so I imagine that it would take uh, it would take probably a couple of days to come up with a poem or a, an essay or a single work of art. Absolutely, it takes time, and um, that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. Right, and I mean, I guess I guess it, it shows. I mean, uh, you. You you become uh, you're widely read and uh, your your works have been displayed in art galleries. Yes, I, I'm grateful for that. But the impetus is not about me. I really yes. want to show the world. I want to be a voice for nature. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, uh, you know, Ellery, I, I guess we might have covered this, but you know, there are lots of books on poetry. And as you mentioned, poetry is not a mainstream kind of literature. Um, what is it about your book that people want to pick it up and read it? I think poetry can inspire people. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that it will inspire people to make change. I think 2020 uh, in the United States is just a huge year for change. And I'm hoping it will inspire people to get out the vote and to uh, really work for nature. Um, and there are many, you know, often I think people feel overwhelmed and what can I do? And mm -hmm. I, I always think what the Dalai Lama said, he said, you know, if you think you're too small to make a difference, try sleeping with a mosquito. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we can make a huge difference this year. And I'm hoping that um, we can all send a lot of emails and postcards to our representatives and saying, I really care about climate change. And I, I also really care about reforestation and planting trees. And I'm hoping people will get out the vote uh, and join groups like the Sierra Club and Reclaim Our Vote and 350.org and really make a difference. I guess that was my hope to inspire people to, to be activists. Right. Okay. So it's interesting you, you mentioned, you know, people are asking, what can I do? So, Ellery, let's say you met this person, you know, whoever this person is, and um, 
is kind of concerned with the, the environment as you are and but you know they don't know the first thing how to go about this and let's say you had only enough time to tell this person one thing about how to go about you know working working with the environment what would be that one thing you tell them i guess i would say send a postcard today okay uh, email today okay and I really understand that people feel overwhelmed because it is clearly a dark time for the earth. I mean, we can't say it isn't. Right. But what I guess I would like to say to them is we have come through dark times before and come out victorious. Mm -hmm. You know, I talked about Rachel Carson and when I was in college, she was doing her great work and I wasn't really paying attention. I was just, you know, looking at my exams and things. But right. if I had been, I would have said, this woman is wonderful, her ideas are great, she's never going to win this battle, polluters are too strong, right. we'll just never win, it's hopeless, why bother? Mm -hmm. And I've been so wrong. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we can't know what the future holds and mm -hmm. we have to take like one action every week or every day. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. So it seems to me with all that you've said that you've got a vision for for what you'd like the world to look like. Uh, would you mind sharing with us what that particular vision of the world is for you? Sure. Um, I think very clearly of Christiana Figueres, who uh, was the main person who made a huge difference with the Paris Agreement. So I'm thinking of what she envisions and what I envision too. And that is, first of all, we could reforest the world. That is buy us time. Um, hooking up with a group to plant trees is a great idea. If the world is reforested, that would buy us a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And we would have cities transformed into sustainable energy. I would love for the Green New Deal to pass because it's a, a bill in the United States that is so important, creating jobs, uh, getting rid of dirty energy. Um, I would like for I guess feminine values to be more important and that how's, how's our decisions going to affect the community. Mm. And so I think it's really possible. We can have a good future, but I think we do have to, since we have this 10 year period start today. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Okay. Got that. Okay. So Ellery, in the last couple of minutes or so of this interview. Are there any last w words of wisdom you'd like to share to maybe inspire listeners? <laughs> well, sometimes I'm wise and sometimes I'm foolish. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I do think this is what I would say. Mm -hmm. We are not powerless. I think sometimes we feel powerless, mm -hmm. but there is a lot of hope. There are a lot of great people doing work on climate change. And um, Ethiopia just planted 350 million trees in one day. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Evidently, what I've heard is that three and a half percent of the population, that's all it takes to make a major change. We're very close to that tipping point of getting enough people behind climate change. We just need a few more hands. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there is hope. We're not powerless and we just have to take some action. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Well, well, yeah, great words, great words right there. And yeah, a few more hands that, that can really make a difference. Yes. Yeah, it sure does. Okay then. So in closing then the book is Swerve, Poems on Environmentalism, Feminism and Resistance. The authors are guest Ellery Akers and you can find her book on Amazon. So Ellery, thank you very much for being an author story. It was very interesting and very inspiring having you with us our guest today thank you so much alex it was great okay you're welcome so everyone check out swerve along with all the other great books we've got in our channel and all the other authors we've already interviewed so see you guys next time on author story and we'll speak to another fantastic author about their book